You're listening to Bible Truth Feed, a podcast by Christadelphianvideo.org for Christadelphians and all those seeking the truth about the Bible message. Join us now as we present our latest episode. So we're going to be talking about hope for a hopeless world. Hope is a human characteristic. Where there's life, there's hope. That's a saying, isn't it, that we have? Where there's life, there's hope. But is that uh, realistically true? For there are so many upsets in life that uh, sometimes things don't work out the way that perhaps we hoped they would. An unexpected change in circumstances, a a loss of job, a serious life-changing accident. Events change, things happen. A severe illness, an outbreak of war. And then what of our hopes and our dreams? Well, in this short talk, we're going to see what the Bible says about hope. And I'm not going to spend time defending the Bible, why we can trust it, why we can believe it. That would take more time than I've got to be able to do that. And we do that in other talks. No, what I'm going to do is quite simply look at what the Bible says about the hope that it offers. And to be truthful, it doesn't beat about the bush. It tells us as it is, that basically, without the hope that the Bible offers, we're living in a hopeless world. That little introductory reading was all about pinning our hopes either on the rock and building our lives upon the rock of the Lord Jesus and the word of God, or we're building our lives in a hopeless world place on sand and when the storms of life come along and beat upon that house it's knocked down and all hope is lost that is the stark choice that the bible offers us in that same place in the sermon on the mount the lord jesus talked about two roads only two roads in life there's a broad way down which the majority of people are going And the Lord Jesus says, it's going to destruction. But there is a narrow way. There is a straight gate into which there is hope of life. So it's a positive message that I'm going to present to you. But it's a message that requires a choice to be made. Now, I want you to open your Bible with me at Acts chapter 27. Because the position that we're in at the moment is graphically described in Acts chapter 27 and verse 20. This is how, as I say, the Bible does not beat about the bush. It tells us the truth. It tells us as it is. And Acts 27 is about a storm in the Mediterranean Sea, in the life of the Apostle Paul when he was on his journey to Rome. He's a prisoner and the ship encounters a horrific storm on the Mediterranean. They're battered by wind and by waves for many, many days. They have to jettison all the cargo that is unnecessary. It's it's heavy weight. It's dragging them down. They have to jettison parts of the equipment that are weighing them down. And we come to verse 20 of Acts chapter 27. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was taken away. Let's take that completely out of context and let's apply that to our lives and what I've just been trying to get across to you because it's so important. All hope was taken away. They were going to lose their lives in this 
horrific storm. And sadly, this is the position that we're in without the hope of the Bible. And it's best that we realise this. In the words of the Lord Jesus prior to his return, he talks in terms of nations like being on a, a, a shipwreck storm, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear, for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven should be shaken. Even the world itself recognises that this planet is in a hopeless position and something's got to be done. But sadly, well-meaning politicians, well-meaning people are trying to, as it were, work out a solution to give us hope, as it were, that this planet is going to survive. And yet, what hope can we have? Especially when we know what human nature is like. Take the environment and the way that governments around the world have all set themselves targets regarding the environment. We're going to cut this, cut that, cut on the other. And everybody says that's a good idea until it affects the pocket and it affects their lifestyle. And no, everybody else, other countries can cut, but we want to carry on the way that we are happily living our lives now. In other words, it's not going to happen. And with the best of intentions, things can change overnight. And you know as well as I do that the war in Ukraine and the threat of energy security has meant now that many of the promises that governments have made have got to be jettisoned. They're not going to admit that, but that's what's going to happen in order to provide fuel security. So with the best of intentions, this world is in a hopeless position and it's no use burying our heads in the sand and thinking that it's going to go away. But the Bible does offer us hope. And this is what I want us to look at. Now, if you're in Acts 27, you only need to turn to the next chapter, to chapter 28, for one example of where the Bible talks about the hope that it offers to all who will accept it. So remember, I was saying that the Apostle Paul was on this journey to Rome. He's a prisoner. And he arrives in Rome and he immediately invites some fellow compatriots to come and join him that he might tell them about the hope of the gospel. He sends a message to the other Jewish people living in the city of Rome. Verse 17, it came to pass that after three days, Paul called, to, called the chief of the Jews together. And when they were come together, he said unto the men and brethren, and he explains how he's arrived at Rome. And then he's going to tell them about his hope, the hope of the Bible. Verse 20. For this cause, therefore, have I called for you to see you and to speak with you, because that for the hope of Israel, I am bound with this chain. You can imagine the apostle there, he's, he's in chains. There's a, a Roman soldier next to him guarding him. And he's there, he says, because of the hope that he has. Let's read that verse again. Verse 20. It is for the hope of Israel that I am bound with this chain. So what is the hope of Israel? This is the Bible hope that is being offered. But it's all right saying that. But what does it mean, the hope of Israel? We'll come to verse 23. And when they had appointed him a day, there came many to him into his lodging, to whom he expanded and testified, the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets, 
from morning till evening. Now, this is a short talk, not from morning till evening. <laughs> but did you see the way, the way that the apostle helps us to understand what that phrase, the hope of Israel, is? The hope of Israel equals, verse 23, the kingdom of God and the Lord Jesus. He testified the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus. And so that we get the message, come to pretty well the end of the Acts of the Apostles, verse 31, and we've got it again. We'll go in at verse 30. And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house in Rome and received all that came in unto him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ. With all confidence, no man forbidding him. So what is the Bible hope? Paul says it's the hope of Israel. And then he explains it. It's about the coming kingdom of God. That's part of the Lord's prayer, isn't it? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. The Lord Jesus is returning. That's the Bible message. To establish the kingdom of God here upon earth. And the gospel message, the hope of the gospel, is centred there in that key character. The Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus means God will save. He's going to save us from the hopeless position that we're in. And that's the meaning of the name Jesus. And the meaning of the title, it's not a name, title, Christ, is that of the anointed, the one who is anointed king of that kingdom when the Lord Jesus returns. Now, turn back a couple of chapters to chapter 26, and the hope is explained in a slightly different way. It's the hope of Israel. It's the hope of the coming kingdom of God with the return of the Lord Jesus, the saviour who will be the future king, the hope of Israel. So this is our second example of the two that we want to look at in the Acts of the Apostles. Acts 26, and again, the Apostle is, the, uh, is speaking, and he's speaking to King, King Agrippa. He's mentioned in verse 1. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. And so Paul now tells the audience this. Verse 6. Paul says, and now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made of God unto our fathers. The hope of the promise made by God unto our fathers. So this hope is a promise that God has made originally to the fathers of the Jewish nation, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And the promises in the scripture are described as exceeding great and precious. They're the hope of the scriptures. There is no other hope for us. This is the hope that is extended to us. And we're given a little bit more information in verse 18. So let's read verse 18 together. This is the hope of the promises made to the fathers of the Jewish nation, the gospel. Their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith, which is in me, which is in the Lord Jesus Christ, is the meaning of that. Paul is referring to what the Lord Jesus had told him to say. 
So to open our eyes, that's what we need, isn't it? To open our eyes to this marvellous hope, that whilst this world is in a hopeless position, we open our eyes, we open our Bibles, and we can see from darkness into the light of God's hope for each and every one of us. And that hope now, now also includes the forgiveness of sins. Jesus means saviour. He came to save us from our sins. For with sin, <clears throat> for with our sins, <clears throat> we know that we die. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So with the forgiveness of our sins, we can have the hope of everlasting life to then be given, next phrase, verse 18, an inheritance. An inheritance. And that goes right back to the promises again to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, where Abraham was invited to go to a land that he was going to be given for an eternal possession walk through the land north and south east and west for to thee and to thy seed will i give this land and that can only happen if abram is going to be given it eternally forever through the forgiveness of sins abram's dead and buried he wasn't given that land but god is going to keep his promise by raising abraham from the dead as he raised his son, the Lord Jesus, from the dead on the third day. Why should we think it's a thing incredible that God should raise the dead? When every year we see and we're living in this springtime, a delightful time of the year, when new life appears out of the dead winter soil. The crocuses, the daffodils, the tulips, all bursting forth and it does our heart glad to see these things after the death of winter why should we think it's incredible that god should raise the dead he's going to do it as he did it for his son and so the fathers abram isaac and jacob those faithful and the faithful down the ages will be given this marvelous inheritance in the kingdom that the Lord Jesus will establish when he returns and the invitation is to you and me that we should be in that kingdom as well if we hold on and believe in faith the promises that God has made and this is the choice that is before each of us you can choose evolution if you want and you're left to the survival of the fittest. That's not a very hopeful thing to think about, is it? And there's no hope where evolution is concerned. That's it. This is it. There's nothing else. But the creator of the heavens and the earth has offered us life everlasting in his kingdom at the coming of the Lord Jesus, when the dead will be raised and if found faith will be granted an abiding place in that kingdom. All that the Lord has given to the Lord Jesus, he will lose nothing if we commit our lives to the Father now through baptism and through faithfully seeking to follow in the footsteps of our Lord and Saviour. Then God will keep his promise. There is hope. Now, as I say, <laughs> I'd like to try and demonstrate why I believe these things, but that isn't in my remit in this short talk. I've tried to just give you, as it were, the bare bones. Without the hope of the Bible, we're all in a hopeless position. Even the world recognises that the position that we're in at the moment in the, on this planet is hopeless. Something's got to be done. But when it comes to something being done, it will never happen because circumstances change. And God has promised that he's going to send his son, the Lord Jesus, to establish that kingdom and bring to an end 
the unrighteous and inhumane way that mankind has been governing itself. He will establish a kingdom that will last forever. And this is the hope that is extended to each and every one of us. We've got to take it with both hands, embrace it, because this is the home, only hope that there is. Thank you for joining us. We hope you found the episode helpful. Don't forget, most of these episodes are also available as videos on our video channel, cdvideo.org. So head over and take a look. If you have any comments or questions or suggestions, please get in touch or leave us a voice message. We love to hear your feedback. You can email us at bt f at cdvideo.org. If you enjoyed the episode, then please share it with others. Until next time, may God bless you in your studies and your walk towards God's kingdom. Amen.